we have Mr. Tassos Rivas. Okay, well, could you please state your names and why you're here? I'm, uh, my name is Tassos Revis, and uh, I have been involved with industry for, for 50 years. Uh, my name is Michael Pedusis. I'm currently a licensed owner, but from 1996 to 2010, I was co-director of Cabways slash Taxi Staffing Service. Okay. So, um, I think you could uh, make um, a general statement. We have your submission and we've seen it, but maybe you could you want to uh, make an opening statement? Well, firstly, I would like to <coughs> thank everyone involved in the opportunity to address the taxi inquiry this afternoon. And I have, uh, well, as I say earlier, my name is Tassus Revis, and I have obtained my first license in 1961. In 1993, I joined the Board of Silver Top Taxi Service. In 90, 1996, I formed Cowboys as taxi staffing service. The same year, Mr. Michael Baidusis, who is a qualified industrial psychologist, joined me as a co-director of Cowboys. Also in 1996, Cowboys began to provide training to Barton and later Chisholm, TAFE, and provide guest lectures to DECA training Type colleges. In 2000, Cowboys obtained quality assurance accreditation. I joined the Council of VTI and I spent a number of years there, and Cowboys became a registered training organization. In 2003, Cowboys was accredited by the VTD to present taxi driving courses. In 2008, Cowboys was accredited to assess English competencies to, to ISPR levels. By 2010, Cowboys have trained around 2,000 drivers. Until 2010, Cowboys operated a fleet of 125 cars. I hope I can assist the inquiry by offering some insight mm -hmm. from my 50 years in the industry. First, I would like to address the point recommended by the inquiry that more taxes are needed in Victoria. The inquiry has made this recommendation in the shadow of the increase of about 1,000 taxi licenses for the last 10 years. The number includes the issue of 520 new licenses in 2010, an increase of about 14 per cent of total. We still don't know how these cars have been performing or how much they are being used. In my view, there is a need to gather more evidence to justify bringing in an unlimited amount of taxes. A high level of scrutiny is required as the market might not provide a viable commercial return if there is an unlimited amount of new entrants. More taxes would mean the drivers and operators will be fighting for an even smaller piece of the bike. I believe that Professor Felsen has said that the open entry license regime will, will result in 450 extra taxes. This is a low estimate considering the New Zealand experience a drastic change from 1,000 to 3,500 taxes in four years. After moving to an open entry system, I would not like to see this guide in Victoria. New Zealand has suffered more problems, such as bad service quality, credit fraud, and a drop in the vehicle standards. I also do not believe there is a shortage of taxes. That idea is misleading. There are enough taxes. It is a common knowledge within the industry that there is a currently an oversupply of taxes in non-peak times, from Sunday to Friday. 
during the week, you will see ranks bursting with access. However, I can see there is a big demand problem. There is a result no longer waiting times. The problem with the worst of this are Friday and Saturday nights around the 12 a.m. until 4 a.m. The ability of the industry to meet the demand is affected by the reluctance of drivers who work during these peak times. It is dangerous for drivers at night and the weekend. They are unwilling to pick up anti-social passages and fear of their safety. More taxes are the answer. The peak demand problem will still exist with no entry restriction. The industry will still face the high turnover of drivers, which or without the move. Drivers' availability is a is the cause of the problem. There are not enough drivers to utilize the existing fleet. Finding drivers is becoming harder due to factors such as the government's choice to tighten international student visas. There is a clear need to focus on returning the drivers we have. This will lead to greater productivity and will benefit all stakeholders. Longer wait times, the weekend can be addressed by increasing the productivity of the existing fleet. The inquiry should recommend that experimentary step. It will allow that more taxes are necessary. A radical change to the licensing regime is risky and not required. Also, it will destroy current license values, and without compensation, it will cause serious hardship to owners and their families. After 50 years working in this industry, I stand to lose everything, and I will seek compensation. Small changes are suitable in light of this. I should recommend introducing the ability to have high fares for big demand times and low fares for low demand times. Introducing a minimum fare for short trips for driver safety during dangerous hazards requiring the scanning of the passage identification before accepting a trip. Introducing the ability for passengers to take shared right, improving access to the city to ease congestion during peak time during the week. Mike will be able to answer any questions for myself. Thank you for having me here. Okay, thank you, dear. Not a presentation other than just to say that I think more taxis will have a disastrous effect on the viability of the industry. I'm, I'm, I don't know that the market can sustain a unlimited entry type point that is being proposed. I it's think not if, unlimited, it's got a price on it. Unlimited means people can get a licence for nothing or administrative cost. Everyone in Victoria knows we're not recommending that. OK, I'll rephrase then. It's, it's looks, it's tending towards unrestricted, whereas I think perhaps the focus is on attracting, retaining and developing the drivers that we have. If we, if we do have a, a, an influx of new entrants, so to speak, that may have some unintended consequences as well that we need to be aware of. And as we all know, if we do have a rapid, rapid influx of anything new in any industry, there tends to be a productivity lag before there's a productivity gain. And we just need to be careful of what we wish for. Okay. Uh, so you um, talked about the driver shortage has been the problem 
What was it? Sorry, you talked about the driver shortage as being the problem rather than the um, insufficient cabs. Um, so who's responsible for dealing with the driver shortage problem, if you see that? What do you mean, who's responsible for dealing with the driver shortage? Uh, well, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, if, if that's true, I mean, who fixes it? Well, it d depends what you mean. I think that there's, a, there's, a sh there's a shortage for a number of different reasons. And the shortage, I think, is due to safety issues, uh, conditions, remuneration, etc. So I think we need to have the ability to attract drivers. And, that, and at the moment, the taxi industry is a privately run industry, not a a, not a, it's, not public, it's not necessarily part of the public transport system, although efforts have been made for that to occur since probably 2010. Would you agree? Um, I, I, I'm not quite sure why you'd say that, but it, I mean, we've heard a lot of people claim that there's a problem of a driver shortage, but uh, um, I'm not sure what people are saying. Are they saying that's a government problem or, or isn't this a problem that exists in any industry, and industries respond to that. For example, by providing safe cars or by providing higher remuneration. Sure, and I think that's one of the things that ha has to be considered. So why doesn't this industry respond in those ways, apparently? Well, hasn't the industry responded historically in trying to do things like that by addressing safety issues with drivers, for example, to pick up on one of your points? Um, you tell me, what, what has the industry done in, in those areas? For safety? And remuneration. I um, mean, we've heard uh, that a lot of the reasons for this inquiry uh, had to do with uh, poor service delivery, and that was related very much to issues around drivers, um, the quality of our drivers and so on. But why, why isn't the industry working to deal with these, in, these issues? Well, I think, it, I think it has attempted to deal with these issues in part. For example, in terms of safety, we've had the introduction of cameras, we've had the introduction of screens, so surely we can go, absolutely we can go further, but there has been attempts to deal with, with some of the issues that you've mentioned. Yeah, it seems to me a lot of those um, examples you've quoted have actually been areas where the government has taken an active interest and imposed solutions on the industry. I mean, I guess it's interesting, it just we haven't heard a lot of um, so-called innovation coming from the industry to address the problems that are the source of this inquiry. Um, people are sitting back and waiting for government to fix these problems. Uh, and remuneration of drivers is seems to be a, a sort of classic thing. I mean, what has remuneration of drivers been increasing as, as uh, We've supposedly had these shortages of drivers, so as to you know attract and keep these people in the industry. I guess that's a really interesting question because uh, the industry has put forth a number of recommendations to increase fares. Now that at this point has not been looked at favourably, is my understanding. Yeah, fares are a bit different from a driver remuneration. Um, they're not quite the same thing, are they? Well, they may or may not. That's not quite true. What's going on? They may or may not be there. 45 years, I know what's going on. Corrupt, corrupt, corrupt. That's not necessarily true. You, you, you're saying fares are the same as driver remuneration? Well, they may or may not be, depending upon how the fare box is split up. Yeah, but but to say that... To the to, in favour of the driver. So the then you have the drugs sitting. That's the root of the game. 44, 42 years in the game. Why are you coming here and tell us what? I better go. If you want to sound the truth, I'll tell you. But to say that they're not linked may or may not be true, depending upon how the fare box is split. I think that's very clear. I mean, that's. I, I don't even know why we're, why we're arguing that. Um, well, it's a significant point. Um, if, if, if you've read the uh, draft report, you'll see that uh, um, 
uh, what was put forward was the um, really the fairly obvious point that over time increasing fares have actually not increased driver remuneration, but they have flowed through into assignments and licence values. Oh, uh, okay, okay, well, let's agree to disagree on that point. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, any other? All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you.